Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast, where it's all about real women, real stories, real inspiration. And now your host and creator of Moms Making Six Figures, Heidi Bartolotta. So first of all, thank you for spending some time with me. I appreciate it very well, thank much. you for having me. So let's start with your professional background. Will you take us through a little bit of your career path to where you are right now? Okay. So originally in my career, I was an open heart recovery nurse. Um, I did some trauma nursing, surgical ICU, but open heart was my passion. I loved cardiac patients, especially immediately after open heart surgery. I did that for maybe 13 years, give or take. Um, an opportunity came up with my current company. So currently I work for a medical device company. Uh, we manufacture artificial heart valves and hemodynamic monitoring equipment. So that equipment's used in the operating room with the surgeons and anesthesiologists and out in the ICUs with the critical care doctors. Mm -hmm. So I've always loved the medical field. Um, I love dealing with the patients. So when the opportunity arose, it was actually an opportunity I wasn't looking for. But when it arose, I took it, it was, I think, at the right time. And I've slowly, the last eight years, just advanced. What, what gave you the confidence to take it? Because that's a different, it's a very different track than the one that you were on. Yes. So the funny thing is, when the opportunity arose, I was at the end of my divorce, or I might, no, actually I was already divorced. I had a three-year-old and four. We were separated very young in their age. They were two and three. And I felt a little burnout in my current career because they wanted me to have more of an administrative role and more of a mentor role, you know, um, be on the transplant call list. And I felt overwhelmed at that time. I kind of felt like, I just want to clock in and clock out. So <laughs> I ended up for a lot more than what I thought. But <laughs> I was going to say, yes. your role now is not, not clocking in and clocking out. No, it's out. not. <laughs> and so um, what ended up happening is how it was presented is, hey, would you like to be a consultant for us? Your background's amazing. Mm -hmm. We can use you as a consultant. So I started off first as a 1099. And once I got into it, I loved it. And I really shined in that role. So an opportunity came up that I aggressively went after to be a full-time clinical with the company. Mm -hmm. Did that for about two years. And then since 2016, I've been a territory manager. So I've slowly progressed mm -hmm. up the ladder. And like you said, no, it's not a nine to five job, more like sometimes 60 or more hours, mm -hmm. give or take. But um, I, I love it. Well, and you also did that as a single mother. I did. So will you talk a little bit about that? Because I think, you know, just hearing you, mm -hmm. there are probably a lot of women that just that role of single motherhood is incredibly overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And to not only do that, but to take on a career path that I know is very challenging. Yeah. Um, Talk about how you did that and maybe some of the lessons that you learned in that. So I think it depends on your why. So my why is my children. It is overwhelming. Um, different times, even still today, it's overwhelming. I do get overwhelmed. But my children were why I made the career change and have gone down this career path. It was early on for the money, you know? I mean, I loved what I did, obviously, but the money that I could make as a single mother to support my children was amazing to me. Mm -hmm. And it made me feel strong and independent, and I got this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, it, it is overwhelming at times, but that's when you have to lean on your support group. Mm -hmm. It's such a, that's such a great lesson. Yes. You can handle it, but yes. you do need people around you. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, you can do it. So that leads into the question that I ask all of my guests, okay. which is, 
Do you remember when you hit six figures? I do. And what did that feel like? It was a big exhale because it was literally like, I can do this, you know, because it was scary. Um, it, the divorce was my choice. And like I said, when we separated, there were two and three. Mm -hmm. So I have to say there was a lot of fear in that. Mm -hmm. So when I, I felt like that six figure mark for me was the measure of success and that my kids are going to be okay. You got emotional saying I that. I did. Yeah. As moms, I think so often what we can provide for our children, it's, it's different than yeah. just worrying about you, right? Absolutely. And you obviously did it very well. So <laughs> what did you, what did you learn in that about you? And, you know, we have a lot of listeners that are aspiring to six figures, mm -hmm. some that are going to be listening that would be your counterparts where they're mm -hmm. already there, but maybe in a transition period. Mm -hmm. What did you learn? I learned that, I mean, number one, I can do this. I am good enough. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we never feel good enough. So I am good enough. I can do this. I have a lot to offer, not just to my two children, which of course that is my why. So that is the most important thing, but to my community, mm -hmm. to my corporation, to my customers. Mm -hmm. So it was a big self-confidence booster for me. You know, because sometimes as mothers, I mean, being a mother is the hardest job there is, and it's the most rewarding. Mm -hmm. But sometimes being a mother, we feel our identity is a little lost. Like, who are we? Absolutely. So for me, also just finding who I was again, that was mm -hmm. something that this job has offered me. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> I, I say this. Sometimes I feel like as women, mm -hmm. we are this jewel that has all of these facets mm -hmm. and we're oftentimes just looked at from the mother facet. Yes. But when all of them are shining, we're so much better. I agree. Yeah. I agree. And for your children to see that. And I'm happier. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's what matters because if you are not happy and fulfilled as a mother, mm -hmm. you can't teach that and show that to your children. So you eventually remarried mm -hmm. and you have a blended family. Yes. Yes. How was that process for you? Oh, that was challenging. You want to talk about challenges? Definitely um, opportunity for growth every day. <laughs> as a woman, as a mother, as a partner, it always presents opportunity of how I can be better. But that being said, it's so rewarding. Mm -hmm. I always wanted a big family. Um, originally, you know, when you're a little girl and you think I'm going to get married and have kids. I always wanted four. You know, I had two beautiful boys and I always wanted four. Now I have five children. So <laughs> I definitely got what I wished for. Um, maybe just not in a different just way. Just in a different way. Be <laughs> careful what you ask God because he ends up giving it to you, but not always in the way you want it. So it's, it's actually a big blessing. Um, as much hard work as it is sometimes, it's also so much fun. Mm -hmm. And um, it's the fun moments that you have to focus on in the good times. Just same with your own children. Yeah. Because it's Growth. not always easy. Yeah, <laughs> so true. Growth opportunities. So one of the things that you didn't mention, mm -hmm. and if you're comfortable talking yeah. about it, you're in a very male-dominated mm -hmm. industry. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. How has that impacted you or has it impacted you? It definitely has. And it is still today a male dominated industry. It has gotten more diverse over the years, mm -hmm. um, but for sure still male oriented. I remember when I very first started in this career, it was chief of cardiac surgery. I was trying to vie for some of his time and get in front of him. And we're in the operating room and one of the other male um, counterparts, not for my company, but uh, territory managers are, you know, big, he was a big college ex football player and he had his ring and they're talking about football and, mm -hmm. you know, hunting and fishing. And I remember standing back going, I'm never going to be able to do this. Like, and I remember going home and getting on the computer. I, I got to learn football. 
I gotta watch this game so I can go tomorrow in the operating room and be able to talk to the chief of surgery about mm -hmm. this game. And I finally realized I don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. I could still be true to me, mm -hmm. but show them what I have to offer. So it has been challenging in another way besides that male to male, how do I connect mm -hmm. with a strong male surgeon, you know, who I don't watch football, I haven't played football. Um, has been, I'm a direct alpha female. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you're direct, it's perceived that you don't have empathy. So that has been challenging because, and I don't mean to stereotype, but if we're sitting at the table in a meeting and we get passionate, we're emotional. You know, if I say, mm -hmm. but it, it comes off differently than if a male says it. So it's, been challenging for me to not accept them, but realize sometimes the differences, how a woman's received in business and a man, mm -hmm. and how do I overcome that? Because I still want to be true to myself, yeah. but I definitely um, feel like there's still a lot for us to overcome. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like it's made you, I think definitely number one, stronger, mm -hmm. but... Um, you feel like it's made you more diverse? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. I I think that um, it's such a powerful, because you obviously have the background and the intellect mm -hmm. and everything that you need to be present, mm -hmm. but in that scenario of just gaining the attention, it is different, It right? is. Mm -hmm. it, it is different. Mm -hmm. And another thing I've had to overcome because of my success in my territory and always being top six, I've had male counterparts say to me, it's because of the way you look. Mm -hmm. Well, you're beautiful. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. And it's sort of insulting. Mm -hmm. And you know, I always look at them and I say, you know, it may get my foot in the door, but if I don't know what I'm talking about, it gets shut really quickly. So I do get that. You get the jealousy sometimes from your male counterparts because they're like, oh, it's only because of the way she looks. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting. I've, I think that sometimes um, men don't understand the hindrance mm -hmm. that that can be oh. as much as they think it's yes. a blessing, I guess. Right? So to your point, I will say it's hurt me more than helped me. Mm -hmm. Um, with other women, mm -hmm. it's definitely closed a lot of doors. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, when you're trying to have a serious intellectual business conversation, sometimes that's not where the conversation they want it to go to. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I, I guess sometimes it's easy to be outside looking in saying, oh, well, it's because you look this way. Mm -hmm. When actuality, like you mentioned, it's a hindrance yeah, most like, of the time. I feel like it's almost navigating these little minefields and mm -hmm. how do I maneuver around it in a way that allows me to display what I really want you to see, which is I'm really, really capable. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm capable. I can keep up mm -hmm. an educated conversation with you, an intelligent one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think that there's a lot of women and especially young women that can learn from you in that because... I remember early on in my career, it almost shut me down. It was like, mm -hmm. this is the only way that they're ever going to look at me. Mm -hmm. And to be able to navigate it the way that you have and with the role that you hold now is really impressive. So, um, yeah, you're a huge role model in that. So my one of the questions that I ask all of my guests is, podcasts or books? <laughs> and are there ones that you recommend on a regular okay. basis? So a little bit of both. Okay. I was probably late on the train for the podcast, but I realized, especially early on in my career, I had a big territory. Mm -hmm. I was doing so much driving, mm -hmm. and um, I decided to start podcasting. And the reason why I didn't do it before, because um, what, podcast has been out since at least 13 years, 15 years, it's been a long time, is sometimes I like quiet because yeah. you talk all day and, you know, I just want a little bit quiet, but definitely in the car when I have long drives because um, it's beneficial to time management. Yeah. 
Um, and also books. Um, I actually like the feel of a book in my hand turning a page. It's almost mentally relaxing for me. <laughs> um, the book that I would recommend if a woman is currently looking to climb the ladder, to get ahead in her career, it's called How Do Women Rise? And it is by uh, Marshall Goldsmith and uh, Sally Hellinger, I believe is her last name. And it's interesting because it talks about 12 habits that women have that hold them back from advancing in their career. Interesting. It is. It's an interesting read. Now, there's a positive and negative to every single one. Mm -hmm. And there may be one that you can really um, feel like that you relate to. And some that you may sometimes be like, what? This is so stereotypical. And maybe some women find exception to it. But I, I will challenge you when you read that book, if you are flipping through the chapters and it's one that you feel like you're taking exception to because you feel that's so stereotypical, read it. Mm -hmm. Because there's a reason why you, you're feeling so passionate about mm -hmm. that. So I definitely recommend that because they always say, if you want that corner office or, um, you know, what is? And it's, it's very interesting some of the things that I think as women that are innately born into us. Mm -hmm you know, that um, we don't realize that we're doing and they do hold us back in our careers. Mm -hmm. And I love that you said, if you if you respond, almost like push forward into it, yeah. that, that lean in, right? Yeah. Like dig lean into in. it, because yeah. there's something There's there. something there, yeah. you know, why did that create that emotion, good or bad? Yeah, that's definitely. Yeah. So what am I not asking you? We have a lot of younger listeners that are aspiring to six figures that would love to be where you are in their career. And then other women, kind of, you know, your counterparts. What, what am I not asking that you think could really touch someone's life? I would say don't let what anyone else says hold you back. In high school, I wasn't known to be, you know, the honor student. I mean, pretty much my counselor sat me down and was like, what are you going to do with your life? I was like, I don't know, you know, and they pretty much had my whole life played out and it really wasn't much of anything. So don't let what other people tell you dictate of who you are or what you do. And don't be afraid to fail. I always say you learn more from your failures than you do your wins. Mm -hmm. And so don't be afraid to fail and try again. And don't be afraid to ask for help and advice and build a support system, find a mentor, find a coach. It's so interesting because I think almost every woman that I have interviewed mm -hmm. has said those three things <laughs> just in their own way. <laughs> yeah. That it's is really powerful. It is. Yeah, it, it is. is. Thank you so much for your time. You're Thank welcome. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment and leave a review on iTunes. To learn more about Moms Making Six Figures, head over to momsmakingsixfigures.com. That's right, momsmakingsixfigures.com.